this presentation on what's new in Vintel Reporting 3.6. In this session, we're going to demonstrate the new functionality found in this release. This release is centered around easier report building, improved parameters, security on data sources, charting, and better integration with the BI server. So let's begin. With this release, we've made improvements to making reports easier to build. One task that was seemed to be very tedious for the users and problematic in the previous in, in 3.5 was that the page setup was connected to the operating system's um, page controller, uh, page setup controller. So what this means is that unless you, if you don't have a printer set up, well, then you don't get a page setup dialog. So there's no way to change the page size. So you're going to get the default 8.5 by 11 page size. So what we've done is created a page setup dialog with inside the product, and they're actually using that now instead of relying on the operating system to provide that information to us. So it's found in the same place, same you know location in the menu. Again, it is is very similar to most page setup um, dialogs. So you can do your portrait or landscape option. Uh, we have a standard set of page sizes. So this is what uh, the reporting engine knows about as far as the page sizes that are found within it. So we have all the page, you know, we have a bunch of different page sizes already predefined already. And so you can just pick it and then it will autom automatically set that height and width. Or you can go and hit custom and then set your own height and width and this is based on pixels. Also you can set your margins on the page as well. So you can set the margins and also set the page spanning. So you can go and look at if you wanted the report to span multiple pages across. So for instance you might have more columns uh, on a report so you can utilize another page to the right of the report as well as you know you can specify how many sheets down you want the report to be as, as well so again like in other like in the previous page setup controller select it hit OK you get prompted to what do you want to do with the elements oh, I laid out in the report do you want to just kind of move everything and left align it do you want to you center align all the elements from center. Do you want to align it right? Do you want to resize everything proportionally based on the previous page size? Or do you want to not change the layout at all and just use the page size anyways? So it leaves all the elements in their respective places. Also in this release, we've added a data palette. So to just kind of make it easier for users to interact with one data as well as format them. So we have this new icon up here on the toolbar and then when you select it you get this floating panel that kind of floats over the report area in Canvas. So if I go to my invoices report here well, it will show you everything that's being utilized as far as your environment variables that are set, your parameters, all the fields that are used in that query. So these are all the fields that are in the main query that you've defined. And then all the functions that you've, and then if you want to utilize them, you just simply just drag and drop from, or from the, from the uh, data palette onto the, onto the canvas of the report. And then you can immediately start formatting. So the, the idea here is that um, you could have the properties windows up we can all, like clear out the, and you can start just laying out your report. So I'll just del delete this, delete that. Okay, I don't want that there. I want to put my address line up there, for instance. And then I just immediately want to start formatting it. So I'm not have to, you know, set so many things. I don't have to swap back and forth between that data panel anymore. I could just interact directly with all the elements that I already have defined on the report. So let's go back to what's new. 
I'll bring back my windows for my elements. Another thing that we've done in this release is better access to those environment variables. And if you don't know what envir environment variables are, these are variables that, for the most part, the way we've defined it is these are parameters that are defined on the BI server. So these are set, these are variables that when I launch a report with inside the BI server, that these all these values are being passed with that passed to that report as well. So I can use them or not use them if I want to. So this just allows me to easily put them in the report. So now we define them directly into the UI. So you didn't have the ENV functions this far up into the UI to know um, what what to use as far as what's being passed around on the BI server. So these are the settings, these are the parameters that are being passed around on the BI server when you launch a report. And so what we're doing here is just putting them more up so into the UI so that they get utilized better. So because in the past you had to go in and create a actual formula to do this. So you had to go into the open formula editor, find the ENV parameter uh, function actually ENV function and then know what parameters that are we are passing around the server and enter it in here and then you could use this you can use this variable on a report which is a you know this process is kind of tedious because then you know then you have to actually use it with inside your variable so now here's just an example of me creating a URL and just utilizing that parameter since I know what the syntax is here of each one of these parameters and what I want to do I want to actually create a link that actually passes you know a couple things one I'm passing in the territory you know field as well as you know dynamically passing in the base URL so if I want to publish this up to the server if the server name changes I don't have to update this report. It'll just it just will work. So I'll just demonstrate that here. I'll publish this up to the server. And then name it and then I think I have one already there. Go. I'll save over the same one. So I'll override it. Let's launch it now. So this is getting all the information from the server. If you'll notice that the roles, we're actually getting back what role this person is. So if I wanted to, you know, take a role name that the person is that has, and then pass it into one of my parameter lists as far as what's driving a list of product lines or products that the user can see, um, you can do that as well as maybe drive it off their username so you also can get the username of, of that user. And maybe you want to use that in a report so that on the, all the reports it has the user's name on it so when they print it it has when they go to the printer they can see that that's their report because their name is put in the page header for instance. So this is an example of us dynamically building that URL using the those, those values and once I if I launch that I'm directly launching into and controlling another report with the same parameter with that parameter and passing that in so I'm passing territory in dynamically I can go and just pass in Japan dynamically and it's building out that URL so what happened what's happening is that these these all these links are dynamically created when the report is run based on the territory name 